Oda is the oldest tofu factory in America. And at this shop, they're slicing up 3,000 pounds of it a day. And that's Jason, a former pro baseball player who took over Oda three years ago. Jason learned how to hand mold tofu the traditional Japanese way from the original owners. It is very cheap to just buy a machine and just push buttons and out comes a block of tofu. But to actually handcraft it, it is definitely a lost art. But because of a growing tofu industry and a spike in soybean prices, Jason is juggling tradition with demand. I put in 11 and 12 hour days, you know, six days a week, so does my mom. We visited the Portland factory to see how Jason's turning buckets of beans into this. Welcome to Oda Tofu. I get here at 2.30 in the morning, Monday through Saturday, to make tofu and start the day. The night before, workers pull out giant bags of soybeans sourced from Iowa. And they're dried soybeans, so they're very hard. You can hardly break it with a hammer. And we soak them the night before, then they become really soft. It takes 10 hours of soaking. Depending on the temperature of the outside, we tend to soak them longer if it's colder or shorter if it's hotter. We want that pure white in the soybeans. Yeah, these are so pretty good. Cooks transfer the soft soybeans to one of two grinders. We grind the soybeans, make a really a slush, and we put it into our cookers, which cook to about uh, 100 degrees Celsius. Then the mixture flows through a giant pipe into a filtering bag in the pressing machine. This machine squeezes out the soy milk. The milk comes out the other end and drops into another filter. So we double filter it to get as pure of soy milk as we can. Okay, this is hot. What's left is a byproduct called okada, basically the leftover bits from the beans like the shells. So this nylon that catches the rest of the okada, people will use it in like baking recipes and stuff like that but also we give it to farmers to feed their cows and pigs. Some of the soy milk gets bottled by hand. It's sold across Portland, but the rest gets turned into tofu. Our tofu is made out of three ingredients, soybeans, water, and coagulant. The mixture first gets a splash of coagulant. So we use our nigari, traditional Japanese coagulant. We can adjust the amount of coagulant that we use to make the firmness that we want. I will actually make a firm, so I'm gonna add some more coagulant because it could be separated from the curds and the water a little bit more. It's kind of like making cheese, right? Like in cheese, the coagulant separates the whey or liquid from the proteins, which clump up into curds. That takes about 15 minutes. So this is what it looks like after it's curded. So these curds are actually nice and like fluffy and soft. That scrambled egg-looking mixture is spooned into molds. Jason hand shapes it using a cheesecloth. So now we just gotta press them into the firmness that we want. It's pretty soft, almost like a waterbed. We make medium firm and extra firm. It depends on how much water we squeeze out. The curds on the firm and the extra firm are finer and harder, so it's easier to get water out. The medium's nice and soft. A hydraulic press then helps squeeze out the water. After it's pressed, Jason carefully flips the tofu into a giant bath. He slices it along the lines from the molds. Tofu headed to restaurants is placed in buckets. Some of it gets fried into what's called hage. So he is a master at chopsticks. Yeah, that is not easy to do with the flimsy tofu. Blocks bound for stores get fished from the water and put in boxes. From soaked soybeans to the final product, probably about an hour. Everything else is really controlled by hand. Although tofu originates from China, using nigari to coagulate is uniquely Japanese. Oda's recipe and hand molding techniques come from Japan and date back to the founding of the company. So Oda Tofu started in 1911. Saizo Oda immigrated to Portland from Okayama, Japan. Shortly after, Saizo and his wife Shina opened a tofu shop using the same three ingredients Jason uses. Back then, Oda was one of many tofu factories, serving the Japanese and Chinese-American communities in East Portland. But then, Pearl Harbor happened, and 120,000 Japanese-Americans were forced into internment camps. Shina and Saizo were sent to a camp in Idaho. There, Saizo died a year after arriving. In the three years of internment, all Japanese-owned tofu shops were closed. Many were seized, looted, or sold off. But the Oda's landlord honored their lease, and when Sheena returned to Portland alone in 1945, the shop and all its equipment was waiting for her. 
that they came back and wanted to start the company again shows testament to the Ota family for wanting to do that. And then also the customers that wanted to buy the tofu and really kept the business alive. Jason bought the business from Sheena's grandson, Ko, and his wife Eileen in 2019. Because I heard that they were closing and I thought it would be such a shame that a business like this would close their doors, especially with all their history. Ko Ota and Eileen Ota really taught me everything there is to know about making tofu. This is their equipment. I inherited all of this. Jason's continued the handmade Oda tradition. There's a reason why people or businesses don't make tofu the way that we do right now. Long hours, hard work, everything that has to do with tofu, I am involved with the whole entire process. You are the tofu genius. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I am the tofu master now. Because Jason's production process is slower, it's hard to compete with big factories, mass manufacturing tofu. All they have to do is push a button and out comes tofu. From the soap beans to packaging to pressing, everything is very automated. It is very different than our process. Really, I mean, that's what we're competing against because they're low cost. And the competition is getting harder as soybean prices soar. China is usually one of America's biggest soybean buyers, but in 2019, tariffs on soybeans cornered China out of the market. It helped prices for our soybeans go down because the demand wasn't there. But when tariffs were dropped in 2021, China re-entered the market, scooping up soybeans and causing prices to skyrocket. Soybean prices haven't been this high in seven years. Soybean prices have gone up drastically, 40% in the past couple months. So I've had to increase pricing. And I think every tofu manufacturer had to increase pricing. You just can't eat that much of the cost. But Jason's customers don't seem bothered. We don't mind to spend more because we want high quality food. We do business with them 20 years and the customers love it. We can never change to other brands. To keep up with competition and supply costs, Jason has made small changes. First, he redesigned the package. Then he bought that packaging machine. He also launched Oda on social media. And his strategy has worked, attracting new young restaurant owners like Chef Tai. He's gotten a lot of buzz for his sandos made with Oda tofu. I'm from Japan. When I had their tofu, I feel like I was in Japan. So I'm gonna make miso tofu katsu, which is vegan. The catchy for Instagram, you know, people love it. Jason now sells Oda tofu and soy milk in over 150 restaurants around Portland. We are making about 80% more. And tofu is expected to keep getting more popular. In 2020, the global market was worth $746 million, and it's projected to grow by more than 5% in the next six years. Nutritionists say that's because it's rich in protein, amino acids, and nutrients. People are, I think, starting to be aware of that. Jason thinks he has two options to face growing demand, moving to a bigger space or opening up factories in other cities. But his biggest goal? Making sure tradition isn't sacrificed for innovation. I think it is such a huge part here in Portland and within the community. It is very exciting to own this business, but yeah, it is a huge weight on my shoulders. So good. Come on in. <laughs>